Chow Jewelry Making Friends. I'm Joey Balistrieri for those of you who are new to my channel and I am doing my let's see my fourth project with this month's gorgeous Potomac Beads treasure box. It was called Everlasting Embrace. Em, let me try again. Everlasting Embrace and it was just full of so many beautiful beads and specialty beads and it was just colors that I absolutely love. So this is my fourth project and it is going to be a bracelet project. I've used about half of this beautiful little seed bead mix that came in the box and I've pulled out from my stash a couple of check glass hearts that just go perfectly with the elements that were in this box and I have separated out some of the lighter colors of this purple crazy at crazy lace agate and I was just crazy about these little star beads they have an AB finish the Aurora Borealis finish they're like a little five point star and they're just in that perfect pink raspberry color and they just look so delicious with the purple colors and then i also have one of the little check glass tulips that came in the box i have done another project really featuring these tulip beads and i can link that below this video if you haven't seen that yet but i think this is going to just be a little small little charm on the end of my bracelet and then from my stash i have a copper tiara cast button and I just want to say, you know, Tierra Cast closed their doors at the end of 2023. And I just want to say, I, I have a few pieces left and I, I'm sure many of us do, but a great new alternative to Tierra Cast is Athena Cast, which is, has just been launched a few weeks ago by Potomac Beads. And if you go on their website, I can link it below, but if you go on their website, they have an entire section. There are 50 pages of high quality metal findings, everything you can imagine from bead caps to head pins to spacer beads and charms. It's really an exciting new line and a great alternative for those of us that are so sad that we can't buy Tierra Cast anymore. So I also have in my little dish two little copper um, number two crimp tubes, and I'm going to be using this soft flex medium wire. It's a 49 strand and it is in the copper color. So I've cut a little bracelet length of that. And I am going to crimp this off today with my magical crimping plier. So for those of you who don't know what that looks like, it's a unusual little crimping plier with only one little notch or well inside rather than the traditional one with the back notch and then the smaller divots going forward. So that's my plan for this bracelet. So if you got the box and you want to make along with me, I encourage that. I'm going to start my bracelet by feeding onto my wire one of those little number two copper crimp tubes and then I'm going to do my button closure first so I'm going to feed that wire through the back of this beautiful little copper button and then put that wire back down inside that tube and bring it up to the back of the button and just have a nice size loop that allows my button to still move a little bit freely, but not be too big. Just that sweet spot, move it up just a tiny bit. And now I'm going to come in with my magical crimping plier and lay that crimp tube right in that well and press down as hard as I can. And you can see that I have pinched the four little corners and now I'm going to turn it in the opposite direction, making sure that it's right inside that little well and crimp down. And now I'm just going to rotate around, gently opening and closing the plier. And when you take that away, 
you have this beautiful tiny little copper bead and so now I'm just going to decide on my pattern here and I think I'm going to do my two little check glass hearts as the focal and maybe do one of these in between and I also think that I'm going to use some copper wire let me reach into my work basket so I have this 18 gauge non tarnish copper wire and I'm going to take my bail making plier here and make some jump rings um, and so I know if you haven't seen this done before it is just a simple spiraling motion and I'm going to take a moment and close these jump rings up really well. And these are not going to function as jump rings. I have decided to have these as my metal presence, as a design element in my bracelet. So let me get a few of these cut and closed nicely and then we can start stringing the little pattern on the bracelet. So for, for making these jump rings, you just cut a straight line along where you started spiraling and just as straight of a line as you can get. I already did a few of these as well. And so the idea is just to, the 18 gauge wire makes them a nice and thick little spacer. And so the idea is to use them as a little bit of metal presence in my bead stringing pattern for this bracelet. So just want to close them up really well and make sure they're nice and closed. And you'll see it's so simple. It's such a simple basic element but it is beautiful and a little bit unexpected. I have not used this technique for a really long time, and so sometimes it's good to go in our archives of things we did and, and do it again, bring it out and do, and do it again. So that's what I'm doing with this technique. So I just wanna take a few moments to close them all and make sure they're nice, perfect circles and then they're ready for my stringing. Okay, so I wanna have my little hearts and this little bead as my focal point. And let's see, I want to also have those on either end, maybe double it. So I'm just cre going to create a little bit of a pattern here and then when, I'm, when I start stringing, I will add in my spacers. These berry tones are my shades anyway. So this just makes me so happy. Let's see, let me get my ruler. I need about a seven and a quarter inch bracelet. And so let me see if how, about how that is. Need a little bit more beads. Let's see, do two more here, two more here, and I may also want to put some seed beads in this design as well. A little silver jump ring from my last project made its way into the tube. And let's see. Let's maybe finish up with the little stars. Now let me get my ruler and see about how far. That should be perfect by the time I add my spacers in and also my a few little seed beads and then my clasp is going to be a seed bead loop that's going to go over the heart. So that should be perfect. Maybe two seed beads. And see if they will go over just to start my pattern yes it does not add any extra security at all to feed your bead stringing wire back into the beads but it's just something that I like to do I guess in case I ever have to make a repair 
then I know that I have that little tiny bit of extra there. I am pretty sure it is not going to feed back through and it is not so that will have to get cut away so I think I'm going to try let me see what one of my little jump ring spacers will look like on the star no I don't care for it it covers up the points so that those little spacers are going to go on the crazy lace agate I think I'll just do one seed bead in between and then put an agate bead and let's try two of the jump rings and see what that looks like. Oh, that is so cute. I absolutely just love that as a design element. So, so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to continue stringing this pattern in this way until I get my desired length and check it and then I will show you I'll come back I'll do all that off camera and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to do my little seed bead loop and crimp it for my clasp on this piece it's a very simple bracelet design but stunning and elegant and just very wearable like I think it's going to be a bracelet that I just reach for all the time so let me pause finish my stringing and I'll be back and show you how we're going to finish this off my pattern is complete and I'll show you a couple of the specific things about it I had to make sure that on the ends here that I had the seed beads or the crazy lace agate because on the other end I actually will need to feed my beading wire back in because I need a loop to go over the button and then also with my jump rings that are acting as a design element in this bracelet I've put three of them in between the crazy lace agate and the check glass beads so there are a little stack of three in between those beads and then these beautiful little check glass hearts with the ab fin i'm sorry check glass stars with the ab finish i've strung those so they are five point stars so i've strung them so that the little point is going toward the hearts on this side of the pattern and then opposite on the other side of the pattern and so i'm really happy with the pattern with my little metal presence the the anti-tarnish copper wire makes a fabulous little element in the bracelet and I'm happy with the length and everything so now what I want to do to make my closure is take one of those copper number two crimp tubes and just let it go down there and now I'm going to string on some seed beads to make a loop that will be my closure on this bracelet so I just need to get enough on here to measure and see if my loop is just have to find that sweet spot to go over this heart button so you know I'll have to just to show you where I'm going just loop it and when I have the right amount it will go over and that will be my closure what I can do is put my wire through the crimp tube and just as a measurement get it coming out there it is let me get my pliers in here to help me okay let me just get a measurement before I crimp. Oh, that is, that is going to be absolutely perfect, I think. It's a little snug, but it goes over easily. So that is, that is all you do is string your seed beads and feed your wire back down through the crimp tube and through the first couple of beads and now I'm just going to 
give that a pull and I have this beautiful little seed bead loop that will act as the closure on my bracelet with this lovely heart button. Just beautiful. So now all I have to do is crimp and once again I'm going to use my magical crimping plier for this so I get a perfect little copper bead right there. I also before I crimp I just want to make sure that my bracelet is I always like to do that just coil it and make sure that there's no gaps but that it's nice and you know malleable rigidity especially in a bracelet like something that's so stiff it just doesn't feel good when you wear it and it doesn't look good either so i'm going to make those little four corners pinched and go the opposite direction and now just go around and around until i don't feel any resistance at all and when i take that plier away I have this perfect, beautiful, really tiny little copper bead, and now I can trim away my excess wire. I am so excited about this little design. Oh my goodness, this is a beautiful bracelet. And I think I am going to, this is super easy to clasp by yourself because I can just get the little seed bead loop at the point of the heart. Of course, I'm on camera, so I'm saying it's super easy to clasp by yourself and it doesn't want to go because that's the way it is, but it actually is easy to clasp. So it just put the seed bead loop over the point of the heart on the button and that really makes an easy closure and it is really secure and beautiful. If my bracelet flips around to this side, I get to see this beautiful copper heart and the embossing on this heart is just gorgeous. So let me take it off and lay it here. And let's create a little dangle because I do think that I want to add a little bit of a dangle, maybe, maybe on this end where the heart is. So I have a package of these fabulous copper plating Athena cast ball head pins. This is that new line that I was talking about. I've actually done a video on the Athena cast. Potomac Beads has launched this beautiful line of high quality metals with high quality plating. And I really think it's going to be an alternative to the Tierra cast that we all loved and miss so much. So I ordered, did a small order and the, the ball head pins are just gorgeous. I got them in gold and copper and silver and they are just stunning. Let's see, do I want to do an agate bead or, um, you know, let me try my little continuation of my little metal presence. Let me see how that looks with two. Oh, that is so pretty. What a beautiful little dangle. And so all I'm going to do is a little wire wrapped loop and I will actually use one of my leftover jump rings to find a little spot and attach this little tulip flower charm to my bracelet somewhere. Probably it's going to go over my seed beads. I'm going to just do a nice, neat wire wrapped loop on this. These are such high quality head pins. If you guys have not been on the website for the Athena cast, I can link it below. It is really, really comprehensive. There are 50 pages of products and it's just any of your design challenges, any of your own work that you're looking for the perfect thing to add in, I would be surprised if you don't find it because they just had everything, including spools of wire. It's really great, really, really great. So just a nice, neat little, little wrap and take one of these little jump rings and find the sweet spot on my bracelet to add that little dangle. 
just that little something extra that my little touch can put it you know maybe I'm going to put it right over this little copper bead right here let's see how that looks I like to attach things clasps and um, dangles and charms like this with a jump ring because I am notorious when I finish a design for photographing something or wearing it for a little bit and then deciding I want to change it. So if I use a nice little jump ring, then I have that option. Oh my goodness, this is so sweet. This is such a beautiful, sweet bracelet for spring. And, you know, not in the past pastels, but in a beautiful, rich, beautiful, beautiful, rich color. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. I can see me wearing this all season. I just love it. I love my little, my little special charm. And I am just like, what a sweet, easy project and not a lot of expense making your own little findings with copper wire. And this is just beautiful and sweet. And I could also stack this with other bracelets. So I'm going to clean up my mat. I'll put some pictures of this lovely little project. This was my fourth project from the Everlasting Embrace Potomac Beads Treasure Box for the month of February. And if you haven't subscribed to the box, you might want to just take a look at it. But you know, as always, if you don't have these exact beads, you can definitely take the design idea and modify it, make it your own. And hopefully you got a little takeaway, a little tip, a little inspiration. That's what I always hope when I post a video. So I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to my channel and, you know, give me a thumbs up and, you know, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And I thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone is having fun on their beading mats and you're safe and well, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, jewelry making friends.